Let it rain and open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Me and Pastor Amy, we lift your wonderful people up before you on this morning. We pray that you would touch them. We pray that you would minister to them. Lift burdens that's on their shoulders. Give them answers, Lord. Someone under the sound of my voice, your faith is extremely weak right now. Your faith is weak because things is not turning out the way you desired it to turn out. I want to say this to you under the anointing of God. He knows how to make all things work together for good because you love God and you're called according to His purpose. Put your trust in God. You got to trust Him when you can't trace Him. God is for you. I said God is for you. And if our God is for us, Glory to God. If our God is for us, who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what could stand against? What could stand against? This is for you, friend. If our God, come on. And if our God is for us, who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what could stand against? What could stand against? If our God is for us, this for you. And if our God is for us, who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what could stand against? What could stand against? Tell them our God is greater, come on. And our God is greater, and our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. And our God is healer, he is awesome in power. Our God, if our God is for us, and if our God is for us, who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what could stand against? What could stand against? Tell them our God is greater. And our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. And our God is healer. He is awesome in power. Our God. Sing it with me, church. If our God, if our God is for us, who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what could stand against? Listen, God is on your side. God is, I'm talking to someone whose faith was extremely weak. You felt like throwing the towel in. <laughs> Listen. You felt like throwing the towel in. God is for you. I said God is. Listen, I said God is for you. He has your back. It's going to work out. God is going to turn it around for you. He's heard your cry. He has seen your tears. Hang in there. Glory to God. Father God, we thank you. Me and Pastor Amy, we pray for those who are at the end of their rope, whose faith is weak. We speak strength into your life this morning. We speak strength into your life. We speak strength into your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Somebody say, Amen. Glory to God on this morning as we continue our series, God Never Fails. We are talking about faith. 
to be healed. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. The Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please God because whoever comes to God must believe that he is and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. Faith is trust. Faith is belief. Faith is not, I, faith is not, faith is not, oh, I know God can do it. No, faith is, I know he will do it for me. Come on, somebody. A- anyone can say, oh, yeah, I know God. I believe he can do it. But it's a whole nother level when you say, no, I believe he will do it for me. You got to make it more personal. You got to take possession. Amen. We are talking about faith to be healed. Faith. How do we get faith, Pastor Sean? Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Are you listening to me? Watch this. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Sometimes sin is blocking the healing power from giving us a miracle. Sometimes there's un, there's things we got to repent of. That's why the scripture says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you might be healed. Why would he say confess your faults to one another? Because unconfessed sin can block your healing. Are you listening to me? unconfessed sin can block your healing. I shared about it a few days ago. Mark chapter 2. The, the four friends, they brought, their, they brought their friend on a cart and let him down in the presence of Jesus. Did Jesus heal him first? No. Sometimes he does. In this case, Jesus said, your sin, your sins are forgiven you. Why did he say that? Because he had to get sin out of the way. It was a hindrance to the power of God in that man's life. After Jesus forgave him, he said that these Pharisees may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said, rise, take up your bed and walk. And he that was paralyzed jumped up and began to walk. And you know, the scripture says Jesus saw their faith. Where did they get faith from? Because they heard about the miracles that he performed. And not only that, in Mark 2 it says he was preaching the word to them. Faith was in the atmosphere. Faith comes when the word of God is declared. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 15. And the Lord, I want you to hear these scriptures. And the Lord will take away from thee, he will take it away from you, all sickness. How much all? Blindness, deafness, paralysis, cerebral palsy, fibromyalgia, emphysema cancers. Are you hearing me? Heart disease, high blood pressure, low low blood pressure, diabetes, broken bones, fractured bones, rheumatoid arthritis, colon cancer. Is there anything too hard for God? He says the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. Why am I teaching the word? To build your faith. I'm preparing you for three nights of miracles. I'm preparing you to receive your healing. Are you listening to me? It says, and the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. He loves you. You belong to him. Are you hearing me? Let's go into Psalms chapter 30, verse 2. David said, O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Notice what David said. I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Prayer comes when you pray and talk to God, when you ask him to heal you, when you pray and cry out to God and stand on the word of God. David said, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. So the healing power, God heals people in response to prayer. I'm encouraging you. I'm stirring your faith up. We serve a prayer answering God. Jesus said in 
Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and 8, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be open for everyone that ask it, receive it. And to him who seeks, find, and to the person who knocks, the door shall be open. Let's go to Psalms chapter 103, verse 3. Who forgive all of your iniquities, who heals all of your diseases. How much diseases? God heals all, not some, all. There is not a sickness on the face of this earth God can heal. But he wants us to come to him in childlike faith. Are you listening to me? Let's keep going. Psalm chapter 107 verse 20 says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He sent his word. Jesus is the word made flesh. Did he heal? Jesus healed them by the thousands. Is he still healing people today? Absolutely. Just a few weeks on the broadcast, a young man by the name of Stefan, 28 years old, never heard out of his, which air was at the left? It's one of his ass. He was born deaf with one of his ass completely. He was born with that air deaf. He never heard out of it. Right on the broadcast, he requested prayer, and we prayed for him, rebuking that spirit of deafness. And in moments, the Holy Ghost opened that air that was deaf, and he could hear out of that air perfectly. Everybody, we rejoice with him on that broadcast. I tell you what, he's a miracle-working God. What is it that you need God to do for you? Listen to the Word, because the Word of God is the foundation for you to believe to get healed. Healing belongs to you. But what I'm doing, I'm adding to your faith this morning. Watch this. Let's go into the book of Isaiah. Chapter 53, verse 4 and 5. The Bible says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. Let me read that again. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Now, when you read that with our English mindset and our Western mindset, and hearing those words, we think, wow, he's carried our griefs. And you think he's talking about a person who's grieving. He's carrying that grief. No, listen, the word in the Hebrew for grief right there means koli. The word koli in the, in the Hebrew, sorry, in the Hebrew means koli, which means malady, sickness, and disease. Surely he has borne our sickness. He has carried our diseases. Watch this. So the word griefs right there means sickness and disease. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. So when you hear the word sorrows, you think you're talking about someone who's sad. No, but the word sorrow in the Hebrew means makob. Makob means pain, physical and mental pain. Are you listening to me? Surely he has borne our sickness and, and carried our pain. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, with his stripes, we are healed. Glory to God. Now watch this. Matthew, who is Jewish, Matthew interprets Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 and explains it in the book of Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 and 17. And watch the words that Matthew used. This is why it's so important to allow Scripture to interpret Scripture and don't try to add your own interpretation into the mix. Watch this, Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 and 17. Matthew says, When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and heal all that were sick. Why? Watch him, watch him interpret Matthew 53, 4 and 5. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Glory to God. Matthew is interpreting it absolutely correctly. Matthew said that it might be fulfilled that was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself, he took 
eye infirmities and bare sicknesses. That's why he was healing people left, right, and center. The miracles were, were proof that he is the Messiah, the son of the living God. Isaiah prophesied it. When the Messiah comes, the eyes of the blind will see, the ears of the deaf will hear, and the cripples will leap like a heart. Come on, somebody. Listen to Luke chapter 4, verse 40 and 41. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with divers diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. Jesus is the healer. I said Jesus is the miracle worker. Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy are not the healers. If we lay hands on someone and they get healed, it's the Lord Jesus. It's the work of the Holy Ghost. Come on. And devils also came out of many crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. We are about to host three nights of miracles here in the city of McKinney, Texas. And we are inviting you, come and join us. You that sick in body, that have cancers in your body, you that need a miracle from God. The doctors have done everything they can, and I thank God for doctors. I don't criticize them. Amen? We have our own doctor. Thank God for all they do to help dying and suffering humanity. But there are some things that's beyond medical science, saints. We're going to preach the gospel at Three Nights of Miracles, and we're going to pray for the sick. Come in, come to a place where everyone is believing together. Come, you need to get out of your atmosphere and come in an atmosphere of faith where everybody is of like precious faith and we all can join our faith with you and believe God with you for that miracle. Sometimes you got to get out of that unbelieving, doubtful, wrecked atmosphere that you are in to get a miracle. We know God can heal you there. We absolutely know it. You know, the woman with this your blood, she wasn't healing her house. She had to leave her house. Blind by the mess. He was on the street corner. The leper went looking for Jesus. Sometimes you got to get out of your environment, that environment of unbelief and all of the distractions, and come to a place where the power of God is focus, laser focus on your healing. We serve a miracle-working God. Jesus Christ, Hebrews 13, 8 says, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He haven't changed. He's a miracle worker. The Bible says in Luke 6, 17 through 19, the people, the multitudes, they came to hear him and to be healed by him. Why did they have to hear because hearing the word preached, build their faith. Hearing the testimonies, build their faith. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimonies. Join us in the city of McKinney, Texas, where we host three nights of miracles. I believe God is going to do a powerful work in your life. Come on, let's put our faith and trust in him. We love you so much. We love you so much. We appreciate you. God bless you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, me and Pastor Amy, we join our faith. We pray for those that's believing you, God, for a miracle. We know you will not disappoint them or let them, let them down. Sometimes we have to leave our own geographical location and get in an atmosphere of faith. Whatever it takes, God, whatever it takes. Somebody lift your hands to heaven and say, God, whatever it takes, I'm willing to do it. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Somebody say, amen. To give in this offering, you can visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry app. Many of you have it on your smart devices. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. 
you can also give through the ministry cash app account. The ministry cash app address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give through the ministry Venmo account. Our ministry Venmo account address is at Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. To you, our viewing audience, and our wonderful partners, may Pastor Amy will never, ever take you for granted. You are awesome. We love all of you. We appreciate you. And just know, we're about to make some announcements about Three Nights of Miracles. Amen. We love you. See you again on tomorrow on another morning prayer broadcast. God bless. Bye-bye.